Hey you guys, welcome to another one of my uh, ghost stories. Um, this one is actually not from a paranormal investigation, because I was a paranormal investigator and actually have started back up again. Um, but this was what got me started, I would say. Uh, this is this is the stuff, this is the encounter that made me interested, you know? Um, so let's go ahead and travel back to 2005. I want to say it was 2005. Um, and this was when uh, I had just gotten out of a, that really toxic, bad relationship. And um, I was kind of just partying and living it up and being crazy. Um, and I was 22, 20, 22 or 23, somewhere around there. Um, and. I'd heard stories about this place called Strawberry Chapel. Strawberry Chapel is a um, local cemetery and it is really old, like really old, really run down. And the reason it's called Strawberry Chapel is because there is a chapel on the premises that used to be used uh, for worship. I'm not exactly sure what de denomination, but I would guess Baptist or Christian. Um, just based on the area that it's in. Um, and this place is kind of notorious for people breaking in, um, destroying the mausoleums and just vandalizing things because it's out in the middle of nowhere. So that's kind of what makes it super creepy um, because there are no street lights. Um, there's no lighting in the actual cemetery. Um, when you go out there at night, uh, it is just pitch black. Unless you bring a flashlight, you're not going to be able to really see too far in front of you. Um, there's no neighborhood around the chapel. I mean, it's really in the middle of the woods. Um, and it's kind of on the outskirts of Monk's Corner, South Carolina, if you're familiar with that area. Um, in fact, when you look up Strawberry Chapel on um, like Google Maps, for example, um, it, it looks like a big black hole. <laughs> There's like literally nothing there. Um, anywho, so um, then my friends and I decided that we we're going to go out there and um, just check it out and get spooked out. And in, when I say friends, they, these were acquaintances that I had just met recently. They were younger than me. They were like, it was three girls and they were like, 17, 18, around that age. Um, I know, I had no business hanging out with them, but it was just kind of a weird period for me. Um, but I decided to tag them along, and uh, they wanted to go, and so we get out there, and um, the, <laughs> the biggest thing was it was, like, super foggy as we started to get there. Like, um, there's an area of, like, I guess like a marsh or like a creek that you go past um, on the way to the actual cemetery and so that kind of added to the creepiness factor um, but anyway so we get there and we park um, we all get out of the car we are there by ourselves there's nobody else around um, it, notably this is this area is also known for people going out there with like Ouija boards and doing like satanic rituals and things like that um, so there's a good deal of that going on in that area um, and I'm sorry I keep going out of focus <laughs> um, but yes so the way this place is laid out is the main gates and then to the left is a big tree like a oak tree or something uh to the right is kind of an underground mausoleum very very small uh more like a crypt very small crypt um and then a little bit further back and to the right is the chapel the chapel's really small i would say no more than 100 square feet 110 square feet very very small but it has two large wooden doors on the front uh, and that is kept secure with a big metal chain and padlock, like industrial grade padlock. Um, so anyway, that's all relevant, I promise. And then throughout 
uh, just scattered amongst the rest of the layout are graves. Uh, and gravestones, headstones, um, a lot of them are broken. You really have to watch your step because you're either going to trip, trip over a root or a headstone that's been broken in half, but it's really tragic what happened in this place because it, it really is a beautiful location, but unfortunately, you know, kids are who they are and it's just fun to tear things apart, I guess. Um, so anyway, so we get there and I start kind of going straight ahead um, and everybody branched off. Like I, I kind of lost track of where everybody went, um, but I heard something very small out of my left ear. Uh, it was a very small, soft voice, high pitched, and it was like, hmm, huh? something like that, like to that effect. I couldn't make out what it was, but I heard it and it just seemed off. Like I shouldn't be hearing that right now, you know? Um, so I kind of went to the left trying to track down the noise. And uh, this is near that oak tree I spoke about before. And I see uh, it looks kind of like a white blob to the right of the tree. Um, and then as I started getting closer, because like I said, like this place is pitch black, so as I started to get closer, my eyes start to fixate on what it is, and it's a little girl. And she doesn't look transparent, she doesn't look um, ghostly, she doesn't look see-through or, or misty or foggy, she looks like a real human girl. Like, maybe five, six? Not five, six in height, but five or six years old. Um, she had a little red bow in her hair, like about here. Um, it was She was wearing the white kind of baby doll dress, very lacy. Um, and then those black, like Mary Jane style shoes and knee high socks. Um, like I remember this vividly and she had big brown eyes. Um, and her hair was like sandy blonde, sandy blonde hair. Um, and I was like, oh, oh my god, one of these rednecks around here left their daughter <laughs> or like doesn't know where she is or she ran away from home or like, I'm just thinking she's the daughter of somebody locally. Um, she got out of her house, she's playing like hide and seek, she got lost, like I'm all thinking of all these like awful circumstances. And um, so I'm like oh, panicked and like getting as close to her as I possibly can and start like kind of not running because I don't want to scare her, but I was like fast walking. <laughs> and um, as soon as I get like, I would say within 50 feet of where she was standing, um, she wasn't there anymore. And she didn't like shimmer or fade. She just wasn't there. And so then I like walked closer thinking she like went behind the tree, but no, nowhere to be found. Simultaneously, as she faded from view, I hear the chapel doors rattling, and I'm thinking, oh my god, the girls that are brought with me are trying to break into the chapel. Crisis, like, we, we divert my attention back there, so I'm like, guys, what are you doing? We're gonna get the police called on us, we're gonna get caught, like, stop rattling the doors, like, you know being the adult in the scenario, I'm like playing mommy. <laughs> and, um, you know, at this point I'm at the gates, like, well, not at the gates, but I'm, a, I'm parallel to the gates. And like I said, the chapel is a further, a little bit further forward from me. But as I look to my right, I see that all three girls that I brought with me are in the back seat of my car. They hightailed it before any of this happened. <laughs> <laughs> they apparently got too spooked and went back to the car before I saw the girl, before the chapel door started rattling. So I'm like, okay, who's rattling the doors? <laughs> um, and so I start getting closer and closer and I can see enough to see that there is no one standing in front of the chapel. I'm not gonna get any closer. I'm fine. I'm like, okay, there's something uh, dark here. <laughs> um, 
So as I realize that the doors are now being shaken by their own volition, and this is in the middle of the summer, by the way, this is like, it was like a balmy 80 degrees out there, no wind, just hot, sticky summer when this happened. So no, no, no wind, no barometric changes, like it was just still stagnant, hot air. So I knew it wasn't the wind. Um, I start walking to the car at this point because they're done, I'm done, I'm seeing phantom children, hearing doors rattling for no reason. <laughs> so um, as I'm walking toward the car though, it just, it sounds like noise coming from all sides, Unde undefined noise, just like a, like, like white noise, that's, that's, okay, so kind of like a low baritone white noise going on, I'm like, what, am I hearing stuff, is that my own brain just like playing tricks on me, as I get closer to the gates, the noise gets louder, and I can start picking out what I'm hearing, and I'm hearing voices, but like not, they're not talking, they're just kind of growl, not growling, like moaning, but there's like a woman and an older man and like a child and it's like every type of voice you can imagine are all like moaning at once. And it was the weirdest thing because it, it almost like, you, you almost didn't realize that's what you're hearing. It was, it was just weird because it was just kind of a gradual thing. By the time I got to the gate, which is like a foot from my car, um, it had become like a scream almost. Um, just loud screaming of every type of voice possible. Um, and then we got in the car and I looked at all of them. I was like, are you guys okay? And they were like, we, we saw shadows, we saw shadows. I was like, okay. And I was like, did you guys hear something? And they didn't hear it. So either I'm hearing shit or I don't know, but I, I, it was unmistakable. You know, there was voices and I just, I've never heard anything like that before in my life ever. And since, I haven't heard anything like that since. Um, so, you know, we all got in the car, we left. Um, I've been back there a handful of times. I have not had any additional experiences like that. They've since put up cameras and like motion detector lights and things like that. But that experience was one of a kind. <laughs> um, and, and really because like all of the graves in that area are all like Civil War soldiers and things like that. I don't think there are any children buried on that uh, plot of land. Um, not that I could see at least. So the girl that I saw and the voices and the rattling of the chains, I honestly think that has something to do with all the rituals and the you know dark magic and Ouija boards and things like that. I really think that has more to do, to do with the activity that we saw, because other than that, I mean that that place is a very peaceful cemetery. It's a peaceful place. Um, so yeah, that was my Strawberry Chapel ghost story. Um, I hope you enjoyed. It, again, that was what really piqued my interest and made me start really looking at the path of being a paranormal investigator and, and just being curious as to what's out there, you know? Um, so I hope you enjoyed. Um, if you're in the South Carolina area and you know about the place, please share your stories below. I would love to hear them. Um, you know, uh, anything you could add really like your own stories or anything like that, I would be happy to hear. So thank you so much, you guys, for watching. You guys are amazing. You're gorgeous. And if anyone tells you anything different, they can suck it. <laughs>